Hi there, it's Neil from Diagonal Move. Tonight I'm going to be playing Flashpoint South China Sea. It's a two-player cube shuffling game, a card-driven cube shuffling game. There you go, a genre I've just invented. The game itself is published by GMT Games, designed by Harold Buchanan, with a solo mode developed by Jason Carr. Now it's the solo mode I'm going to be playing today. And I won't go too deep into the rules straight away because it's fairly straightforward once you get a few turns under, you, under, under your belt, as it were. Now, that's not to say I'm mi not missing 10 layers of nuance here. So as we play through, please bear in mind, this isn't a strategy guide. This is just a, a, a video that's going to help you understand whether or not you like the game, maybe work out whether it's the game for you. Okay, so we are playing uh, as either the US or as China. Now tonight I'm going to be playing the US against China and I'm going to be trying to exert influence in the right places at the right times as, as I said before and there's a few other things that you can do as well. Within the game structure there is a bias towards China and apparently in the rule book it says if you are both equally experienced the person who plays China has an advantage. Now with a two-player game, you would ordinarily bid for who, who is going to play the US, with the winning bid representing the number of points that the US side starts as an advantage. In the solo mode, that is simply represented by a points handicap, and for the normal game, the handicap is actually zero points. An easier game would be three, and a harder game would be three towards China, playing as as the US. Were you playing as China, the points handicap is more down this end of the board. We have in front of us the board itself with a few different locations. Each location has two tracks, a diplomatic and an economic track. And there's a couple here, well three even, uh, circles or ovals which are representing um, contested islands. Now that's really what we're trying to, to wield our influence over. At the top we also have a political warfare track uh, and then we have things like the tension track and a campaign record. On the side here we have scoring cards which we will score when the opportunity arises and then at the end of the game after three rounds we will score each of them individually. So potential for two scoring rounds in the final, final campaign. Each turn we'll deal ourselves six cards and the solo bot will go first. Now the solo bot follows a system of priorities, which is this card up here, and broadly speaking, they're very similar to, to what you would do as a player, with a few differences, so I'll explain that as I go through. All that's left to do is, is do the setup. Now I've drawn myself the six cards, and I can see that I've got a few friendly cards, which are the blue ones, one that is friendly towards China, which is red, and then a couple of these one one value cards, which are kind of neutral. Now on the, on the cards themselves, there's a few different different things. This is the operation number or the operation value. You can do up to three operations, uh, or, va or operations up to a value of three using that number. And that is essentially placing cubes somewhere on the map. We have a flag down the bottom here. Sometimes it represents a country, sometimes it represents a mix of things, and that is scoring the card that's reflected by the flag. So for example, this one that says CR Fonop would score this one down here, should you play it as that. We have a suit, which uh, essentially if you have a card that's on the discard pile and you want to play a card that matches the suit, you can score or play the event from the top of the discard pile, which is quite interesting. And then finally, we do have the text and you can play the cards as the event. Okay, so that's basically the cards. Now all we have to do now is place the remaining four cubes. We have, broadly speaking, the same number of cubes on the board each at the moment. Uh, the China bot does have six cubes because it does not have a reserve, whereas we have four cubes plus two in reserve. Now the bot will place their cubes and it will first thing it will do is it will look to see where it's placing some economic influence. And we have Philippines and Malaysia. So we'll place a cube in the Philippines and in Malaysia. Then we will draw another one and we will place diplomatic influence in Malaysia and Vietnam in this case. 
Okay, so that is the bot set up completely. We now need to decide where we're going to place our cubes. And so I'm going to place these four cubes. I'm going to place it one with Vietnam, one with Indonesia, one in the Philippines, and then I think one in Brunei. Now the reason I've done that is because these are the locations where the I can gain an economic advantage and also reduce the economic advantage potentially that they had here. So we've evened out our economic advantage in the Philippines. Okay, so I just got to shuffle those those two cards back into the solo deck, and then we start the game with a solo uh, bots turn. Well, the way this works is we have uh, a number of, of symbols on the card, whether they're going to resolve political warfare, whether they're going to place cubes in the contested islands, and where they place influence. Now that's going to be done in order, and really it's not strictly speaking the order on here, it's it's the order based to a set of priorities that are actually listed on here as well. So it, this is a tie break really, depending on where you have um, of where the cubes are on, on, in terms of the board state. But let's, let's just, just to start, shall we? So what we'll do first for the solo bot is we draw the top card of the event uh, deck or, or the event deck. And we see that it's a, a one value operations card um, detailing the Prime Minister of Japan and it scores economics. Now, first thing we do is we look to see if we can score. Can the bot get a greater score in the economics card than me? If the answer is yes, then it will score economics. Now the economic uh, scoring card says for each country where a side has the most influence, score one VP. And so we have an economic influence for me here, for the bot there, for me, and then a draw, and then me again. So overall, I will have a better score if the bot scores that card now, so it won't score that card. Then what we'll do is we'll draw a solo card. And on here we see that we do have the political warfare, so we know that China is going to attempt political warfare in this turn. It won't do it straight away, because the first thing it does is it checks to see if there is a friendly mode match. Now that would be this number here, the suit. You know I said if we play a card and it matches the discard pile, you can play a friendly event. We don't have an event card in the discard pile at this point, so we just ignore that for this particular round and we'll check it next time. Now we check to see what the event value of the card is. So here we have an operations or an event value of one. Now that means it will um, do one of two things. If there are six uh, cubes in these three contested islands and for the Chinese side, it will set the tension, which is this track, to critical, meaning it's, it's more difficult to do certain things. Otherwise it will set the tension to low. Now it's already low. Okay, so it won't really do anything with that event this time. After doing any events associated with a one value operation card, we check the solo card with political warfare. Now, if the flag of the side controlled by the AI is present on the card, it will attempt to resolve political warfare. This is one of the areas where the bot does differ from the solo player. Now, normally in the two player game, over the course of time, you would add cubes to this track here, which is the political warfare track. When you wish to attempt the political warfare, which is a free action, and it's the only free action really in the game, you would draw the top card, compare it to the track, and if it's equal to or less, you would score a, a success. You, you, know, you would have a political warfare uh, success, and you would lock down a country so that your opponent has greater restriction on how they place cubes in the region, essentially. Draw the top card. We have a two. That's greater than the card on the event discard pile. Therefore, it's a failure, and we place that card back on the bottom of the draw deck. And then finally, we perform operations. With operations, the bot will always try to place a cube in a contested area if it can, as its first thing. If it cannot do that, it will then move on to placing economic 
wherever there's a tiebreaker, you will place it according to the list on the cards. Now on the card here, we have Scarborough, which is this place here. And so the bot will place a, a cube there and raise the tension. Now with China, there's a slight asymmetry in how much things cost. Most things cost one, uh, one operation point to perform, except placing a red cube in the contested islands or a, a uh, CR cube as it's known, costs more the higher the tension for China. So if we had any more operations points than one, we would have to have at least two remaining to be able to place a second cube. So it's kind of a slight asymmetry between the US and, and China. Okay, so now that's actually my turn. Uh, this card here I will place off to one side as the discard, just so that I recall that it's actually the discard. In fact, where will I put that so you guys can see it? Let's pop it Let's just leave it there so you can see it. Okay, cool. So we've got a bunch of cards. Uh, it would be worth, from my point of view as the US, trying to keep that tension level quite high. Uh, now, I did assess earlier that scoring economic right now would give me a positive result. But whether it's a right time to do it is an interesting question. I could score that card uh, with this card here. We have the uh, flag. I could also score Brunei. Um, Phonops, I couldn't score because the contested islands are currently being won by China. They have a majority of cubes in those three things. Uh, I could play some events, but I think what I'll do is I will I will play this card. And I'll play it for its event rather than, rather than the scoring. And the event says, place one FONOP, that's the freedom of operator of navigation operation, I believe. And I'll move one di Chinese diplomatic influence from three countries. Now it's only got two, but I'll do it at the maximum I can, but then I'll increase the tension. And that means it's gonna be more costly for China to do anything in the next turn. So let's play that as the card that I've played. The fun up will mean one of these will go here and I'll pop it into Scarborough Shoal because this Philippines is drawn currently. However, when you score the Philippines, you also count any cubes in Scarborough Shoal. So now we are drawn again. So the Chinese bot currently cannot beat me at Scarborough Shoal or the Philippines when it comes to scoring. I remove the diplomatic tension, which are these two. There is a difference between diplomatic and economic, uh, which I will come to when we do the end of round reset. And then I'll uh, increase the tension to high. Okay, so that's gonna make it more costly for China. And that's my turn. So then we just do the same thing again. We flip the card. We have a uh, three value operations. That's quite a good one for China with a matching a matching symbol, so the symbol of the aircraft there matches on, on both, but it's not a friendly to China uh, uh, card underneath there, so it won't be able to do the mode match. It, they never really do the texts, but what we do need to check first is whether or not they score the CR Phonop. Now, this is quite a powerful card for anyone, because if you have a majority of cubes here, you can score up to four VPs based on the differential in terms of cubes. Now, because we're drawn, we will not have the bot scoring that card because it's a draw, there's no benefit to the bot to do that. So now we draw solo card. And the first thing I tend to note is that we don't have a Chinese flag, so it won't do the political warfare action. Also, there's no friendly mode match between the card currently being played and the discard immediately underneath. Let's pop that there so we can see it's the card currently being played. And it's not a, a one point value operation card. It's not attempting political warfare because there's no flag and therefore we'll jump straight to the operations. Now it will always prioritize the um, 
the contested islands if it can and it has a value of three for its operation it's not critical you cannot place cubes in the contested islands when it's when the tension is critical therefore we will place one in the order shown on the card which here says the Spratly Islands are first or for any tie breaks so we'll place a cube there and increase the tension to high another difference between our turn and the bot's turn is that the bot does not have to move a cube to reserve when it moves the tension to critical the critical tension is important because it now means that we cannot conduct political warfare and we cannot place a fun op of our own but what can we do okay we have the philippines it's currently drawn the fun op we would lose brunei we would score and then a couple of these these tracks here now i think it would be well worth us dropping the tension using this card in place for the event this is one of those one operation event cards first thing we we'll do is drop the tension to any level and then execute the card as a one value operation so what i'll do is i'll drop the tension to medium and i'll use my one operation point to place a cube in the in vietnam's par paracel island so that is a uh freedom of navigation operation meaning i push the tension back up to high and i've just realized that this card here should actually go on the top of the discard pile okay that's my turn over it's a very quick playing game this once you get the hang of it right let's check the discard pile for the for the bot and it's a two operation card with a money symbol and scoring economics so will it get a positive point score on the economic tracks the answer is again no so we won't score economic meaning we check for the solo card the mode match is negative we don't score we don't have to do anything to do with the mode match we have a two value card so we don't do anything relating to the fact it's it, it, the one operation card uh, actions that you would do and the tension is not critical so we check for political warfare the card does show china therefore we draw a card off the top if it's less than or equal to two we will have a country locked down and it's two we are going to lock down a country generally speaking we lock down the country that has the most of the player cubes in and we have a draw which is this one and this one the most cubes of any one track is, is the official definition i believe we've got a draw so we have the philippines and vietnam as our draw uh, it will do the philippines first because the philippines is listed first on that tie break so the Philippines is going to now be quite difficult for us to place any cubes into unless we unlock that by performing political warfare ourselves which would require us to put our own cubes into the track just there so we we would do something slightly different okay my go we have a UN action petition card and that's quite good it lets us place diplomatic influence and then we get a VP if we have the most diplomatic influence that would be quite nice VPs are important to keep keep hold of we could get a VP just by scoring Brunei but then we wouldn't get the extra cubes we could play this for the um, operations value that would be quite nice we could get cubes down in a few different places we would push the tension to critical though if we did a fun op operation which would mean we push a cube of our own from available to reserve which you don't necessarily want to do so we won't do that this isn't useful for us because it's, it's really a chinese event card uh, you can tell there because it says remove a fun op basically uh, yeah and here we have another good card for us involving diplomatic influence but we need more than seven for it to be valid 
and there's one of those reduce the tension cards and execute an operation. So I think playing the UN action petitioned is our best choice here. Place two US diplomatic influence and then if we have the most diplomatic influence we get a VP. And so I'll place the two and I'll place the two. One in Malaysia. Actually before I do that let's check what we've got on the scoring cards. We've got the Philippines and Malaysia. Okay cool. <clears throat> let's place them both in Malaysia. <clears throat> meaning we're now drawn. Um, we're drawn. Okay. Maybe it would be worth placing one over here. Because we're currently losing in terms of total cubes between here and here. The lock cube counts as well as the, the uh, other cubes. But that's our turnover. I think I'll leave it as it is. So that's our turnover. Let's check for the uh, bot. So we have a two value card that's friendly to the U to the US. Scoring the Philippines, it huh, immediately regrets not putting the cube in the Philippines because it will score the Philippines because currently it has four cubes, three on the economic track, one on the lock and a CR cube in Scarborough Shoal. We only have four, meaning it will score a VP. Uh, and that is the first VP of the game. Okay, so that card flips and cannot be scored now until the next round. The bot's turn is over if it scores. Okay. I'm going to play this card for its three value at the top. And I'm going to move my two cubes from reserve to available for two action points. And then I'm going to place one of the cubes in, in Malaysia. Let's place it in Malaysia. Cool, my turnover. The bot card then is a two friendly to me. Uh, it's scoring Brunei. The bot cannot score Brunei because we are uh winning brunei as the player so we run to run through this series of priorities which we have here the um first thing we do is check for the scoring which i've done it cannot score so we draw a solo card um the solo card doesn't have china so we know we won't have any political warfare we don't have a friendly mode match because it is a dollar sign and a I don't know sandcastle with a flag not sure and it's not a one event, the one up event card, meaning we just jump straight down to spending the the uh, operations points. That would be the bot's turn. We cannot place cubes into the contested regions because the tension is critical. Okay, so what we'll have to do as the Chinese bot is place them in the economic locations first, then the diplomatic locations based on these priorities here. So Vietnam would come first. And really what it does is it tries to negate any advantage that you have really, followed by the Philippines. Now the Philippines is full, so it would place a diplomatic influence in the Philippines. Okay. Back to Mongo. And here we have Malaysia and the Philippines. Now I can't score the Philippines because the card is down and also I would, I would lose anyway. Uh, so I could score Malaysia now or I could play this top card either for, well, I can't play it for its event, I don't have enough diplomatic cubes, but I could play it for its three operations value, which is quite good. Don't have a lot of cubes left, I've only got the one cube, so I may as well play the um, one up card for the Malaysia scoring. I have four cubes between here and here, the bot has two, meaning that Malaysia scores me a single VP. Okay, last turn of the first card round for the bot. We have a three value card friend to China. Uh, we can not positively score Indonesia, which is this one here. We, we as the player, would, would win any scoring there. So the bot does not score Indonesia. 
we don't have a mode match because we have money and and a plane it's not a one event value card therefore we just go to the political warfare because it's a three it's almost it is a guaranteed success but we have to draw the card anyway so we've got a two it's less than the value we drew so we're going to lock down another country again the country with the most of any one type of influence for us any ties would be split using the card and it would go to vietnam and that's the end of the turn for the bot so my turn then is just to place this card down for its cubes i don't have a great deal of cubes as you can see so i think what i'll do is i'll just pop that cube into i'll probably place it actually into Brunei. i'll show you why that is now that we're done with the with the round okay so with the round we will need to do a few separate things first off we shuffle the solo card back, back into a new deck we then deal ourselves six new cards the tension track moves one space towards the lower end the campaign track moves up lock cubes are removed back to available the economic cubes one is removed for each country from each track and the reason i kept brunei as diplomatic uh, is because diplomatic cubes do not get removed meaning i still have presence and indeed control of brunei currently just need to remove a couple of these for china as well and then the last final thing remove the fun ups yep fun ups go that is the big advantage china seems to have over the us is that these contested islands cubes stay if you're the china player just turn over the scoring cards refresh the scoring cards that's the last thing we have to do so we'll start the new round starting with the chinese bot i will move through a little bit more quickly now and what i'll try and do is i'll show you the political warfare action from my side uh, as well it may not be the best thing to do at any one time but i'll show you it just so so that you can see it uh okay so the bot's turn though we have a three value card scoring cr fonop now straight away we've scored the cr fonop as the chinese um bot meaning they score two vps straight away and that scoring card flips down that sucks frankly but at least it's our turn straight away what am i going to do good good question i tell you what let's show you that political warfare action from our side i could score brunei oh maybe i won't use that card then because i could score brunei uh so what i'll do is i will use I've got two Brunei cards. Let's use use the use the Brunei card here. So I'll play this not for the fact that it scores Brunei, but because I want the two operations points. And I'll use the two operations points to place political warfare there. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and lock down the Philippines. So basically, I'm going to draw the top card. If I have two or less, I will be able to lock down the Philippines. Three, I won't be able to, and. Um, that would kind of be a wasted action really but anyway, let's see how it goes we have a two fantastic so that card means that we can lock down the, the uh, philippines from any additional uh, chinese cubes for now we do that by placing one cube on the padlock sign the two political warfare cubes we placed just go back to available that is my turn the drawing of the political warfare card was free the placing of the cubes cost me one each in terms of those operations points okay bot's turn we have a three wow that's a good card for china a scoring vietnam um it will not score vietnam though because we do not have 
uh, extra cubes as the Chinese bot to be able to do that. So we'll just draw that solo card. Check the mode match. It is a sandcastle versus a dollar sign, so there's no match. It's not a one-up card, so we ignore that as well. There's no flag on the solo cards. So it will not do political warfare, meaning we just spend three operations points on the the Chinese cubes. And what it will do is it will first do the contested islands. Parasol Island first will place a contested uh, Chinese reclamation, it stands for. Um, and so we'll place that there. Uh, because we placed it, we increased the tension. We only have one operations point left as China, meaning we cannot increase the tension any further. Therefore, we have to place an influence cube somewhere. We cannot place it in the Philippines, which is actually the lowest priority thing for it to do anyway. So it's just going to choose either Malaysia or Vietnam because there are two cubes of one type on, on the tracks. And in order of priority, Vietnam is before Malaysia. Okay, cool. That is the bot done. Uh, our turn. Disliking very much the fact that the Chinese bot is already on two VPs. Um, so what I'll do is I'll... Pr can't score the Philippines just yet. Brunei scores a very, we'll score as a single point, but it's a very good card there. There's no mode match for us. Can't score Vietnam. Can't score the Phonop. Wow, so if I want to get a point, I've basically got to, hmm. I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to play this as a regular card. So just for its uh, regular card, it's not really a regular card, but play it for its operations rather than the text or something. Ooh, oh, actually, this card actually says, if the tension is high or critical, place a US economic influence and three diplomatic influence cubes. So that's basically four operations value. So let's do that. Let's play that for its a text, which means we place four cubes. Uh, one economic influence, which I will place in Vietnam. Three diplomatic influence, which I'll place one in Vietnam. One in Philippines. And you know what? Just so that I can score Vietnam. Do I have Vietnam in here? Yes, I do. Vietnam is that bottom card. I will play second Viet cube in Vietnam, meaning I now have the advantage of five versus four, which will allow me to score Vietnam next turn. Cool. Bot's turn. It's a two value card for the US. Economics is the scoring possibility. We have a draw here, a draw there, a draw there, and a win for me, so it will not score economics. Meaning we draw the solo card. It is not a friendly card, so there's no mode match. It's not a one operations value card, so there's no operations things to do. No political warfare. So we just spend two operations points on something for China. Now, we cannot afford uh, to place a CR because the tension is, is at high, which is a three um, point action for the bot. So what we'll need to do is work out where to place regular cubes. And what that will be, be in, can't do the Philippines. Uh, they tend to prioritize areas with contested islands. It can't do the Philippines because we've locked it. Can next up would be, would be Vietnam. So we could place one in Vietnam. Although Indonesia is the next highest priority. So I think what it would be, would be Vietnam first, because of the fact it is associated with the island. Uh, and then the next one on the track would be well, Malaysia, because it's got the islands, but really Indonesia is next. So what I'll do, not quite sure how to interpret that, whether I should place it here. 
It says to place Indonesia second on the card. So I'll do that just for the sake of speed for videoing. Okay, as always, if that's potentially incorrect, please do let me know because I'm sort of, sort of thinking I should have popped it in Malaysia. But to me, it makes sense to stop the economic gain here more than it does to try and stop me scoring Malaysia. Um, but I might be wrong. Who knows? Okay, my go. Now that's a good card if I wanted to place fun ups, but they've already scored the fun ups, so right now that's not a huge problem for me. I could use it later to score the Philippines. Uh, the reason it's a good card for fun ups is it lets me place two fun ups down, which would kind of even it out a little bit. But right now that's not a major thing. This is probably more important, um, even though it's my Vietnam scoring card. It says place one fun up at the Parasol Islands and move a Chinese uh, cube out of the Parasol Islands, increasing the tension, which is kind of like a bit sucky because I'm going to have to put a cube into reserve, but that would level the playing field a little bit for next turn. So I'll place a cube into the Parasol Islands, remove that, and then pop that into reserve. All right, bot's turn. It is a two value card scoring the Philippines. Uh, it cannot win the Philippines. So the next thing it will do is it will draw a card, a solo card. We have no political warfare and the priorities are listed with Brunei first in terms of cubes. Therefore, that tension should have gone to critical. Therefore, we couldn't have done the political warfare anyway as China because tension is critical and there's no political warfare at critical. So basically all we do then is we run through and we will have to do two operations points. Now we won't have a friendly mode match, even though the symbol is the same. We've got like a sandcastle on both those two cards because the card on the discard is actually a US friendly card, not a China friendly card. So we're going to have to place cubes. Uh, can't place the CRs because the tension is high. Well, it's actually critical. Therefore, we will place them here. Uh, this time Brunei is first, followed by Vietnam and Malaysia. So this time, to even it out in case I wasn't doing it right last time, one will go in Malaysia and the other will go into Vietnam, even though Brunei is first because we have those islands associated with them. Again, if that's not quite right, please do clarify, help everybody learn. Okie dokie, that is my turn. Not got a huge amount left. Um, still not getting much in terms of the <laughs> scoring in the Philippines, which is my one scoring card. Uh, I don't want to play that because the tension would go low, which would be a pain. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, a one value card. There's no mode match. I can't score the fun ops because the scoring card is face down. Therefore, I'll drop the tension to high and then I have to execute it as a one operation, a one operation value card. I will have to do that, I suppose. Arguably, arguably, I could move one of these, but I think you actually have to wait until you've got no cubes left before you can move, move around, I think. Uh, okay, like I think I said at the beginning, there is multiple layers of nuance that I'm probably missing, but we shall see, we shall see. Okay, China bot's turn. We have Brunei as the scoring card. It won't score Brunei. There's no friendly mode match. Uh, it's not one operation, so we can ignore all that altogether. It will do political warfare though, because the tension is not critical. Okay, let's see where we go with that. Drawing the card, we have a two. The two value there, meaning it is successful with its political warfare and it will basically place, I think it'll probably place the cube in Vietnam. Now I've just remembered I should have moved cubes to available. So that should have actually been moved before. Now that was a mistake. I will not bother moving them now, but that's something for my future knowledge. Political warfare does remove cubes. I will score the Philippines. And 
I may or may not have had an extra VP from the fact I didn't move those cubes before, but I will score the Philippines. And the Philippines will give me a total... No, I can't score the Philippines because it's drawn. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to play that for its... Um, operations value. And that will allow me to place cubes into some of these other regions. And I'll place diplomatic cube there. And I'll place an economic cube there. Okay, last turn of round two for the bot. We have a one operation value with Indonesia as the scoring condition. It does not score Indonesia. So flip over the solo card. Uh, there's no political warfare, but we do need uh, a no mode match. So we do need to do the tension to low, which is the instruction when there are less than six red cubes in the contested islands. Then it will do a one operation value card. Uh, and then it will place a cube into the Spratly Islands and then move the tension up. So it is getting... Yeah, okay. So my final final action then would be to play that card. Tension to any level. I'll push it to high. And I'll move the cube to a reserve because I pushed it from... Sorry, I pushed it to critical, rather not high, but to critical. And then the one operation value will allow me to place another cube down and I'll place a cube into, I'll place it into, let's place it into the Philippines. I will get to score the Philippines eventually. Okay, right. That is the end of the round. So we did do that whole reset thing again. Okay, I have six new cards. The solo deck is shuffled. Campaign is down to three. One economic cube from each place is removed back to available. And we have removed any fun up cards with the scoring cards flipped. And we move into round three. This time, of course, at the end of the round, the scoring cards will flip back up for a final post round scoring in addition to any scoring during the round. But what I'm going to try and do really is just score as much as possible to take away that deficit because the bot will basically rinse my points as, as much as it can really, <laughs> basically. Um, so we have Indonesia, which we're currently leading on. We have Vietnam, which were something of a distant second. Phonops were definitely distant second. And economics. Economics might be useful for us to try to exploit a little bit. Um, Malaysia. Okay. So what we really need to do is try to negate this. This is probably the most important thing to negate. Try and get as many fun ups in there as possible. Together with uh, balancing cubes for the Philippines. Now that's going to be pretty tricky. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, in terms of operations, we can move diplomatic influence if we have the right number of cubes we can move economic influence that would be good we can move chinese economic influence that would be a really good card to play but before i can play that we do need to do the solo bots turn and the first card is a cr fun up oh dear that is terrible because it's going to score three points it is a differential between the number of cubes it has and the number of cubes I have. Uh, basically, it has way more cubes than me, so it will score three. The most it would ever score is four. So even if it had all six full, it would score at most four. But we have three in this instance, meaning China is on five. And things are looking a little bit bleak now for the, the US player, or me, as it may be. That card flips. Now, the difference between this round and the previous rounds is that card's going to flip up and be scored again. So I still need to get Von Ops in there. But first, let's think about what it could score during the round. And it could potentially score the, the economics. However, what we have here is a card that says Typhoon. If behind in VP, select Scarborough Shoal, Parasite Islands or Spratly Islands, we've all Phonops and CR to available. 
that is going to save our bacon, quite frankly, in terms of the fun up scoring at the end of the game, potentially. But it will reduce attention to low, but frankly, that is worth doing. So there's no fun ups. Spratly Islands go to available. Attention does drop, sadly, meaning it's going to be easier for it to do things this turn. But let's see what it will do. We have Malaysia as a scoring country and it will not score Malaysia because it's currently behind on cubes thanks in part to the fact I took them all away um, and it's not got a friendly mode match there's not a one operation value point card but it will do political warfare and we need to get a two or less it's got a three meaning one of those countries will be locked down and the country that will be locked down is going to be the, the I would say it probably would be the Philippines because we have more cubes. Oh, it's also the tie break. It's, pretend, it's supposed to be more cubes of one type, um, which would be mean it'd be either this one or this one. But I think Philippines is first on the uh, card there, meaning the Philippines will become influenced by China. And those economic cubes disappear. Okay. My go. Uh, so I have Malaysia. I will play that as a scoring card, meaning I score two points for Malaysia. And it's the bots go. Bot has a two value card. It's Indonesia, so it won't score that. It's not a friendly mode match. Uh, it does not have the political warfare. It's not one operation, so we just spend those two points. The two points it will spend, one of them at least will go on a CR, meaning Scarborough is the first one. So that's the one that will go on. Tension will go up. And the second operation point will be spent on a cube. They tend to prioritise places with islands. So I think it would probably go... It probably would go to Vietnam. It, it, it prioritises the places with scoring, uh, with contested islands and a scoring card. Now the scoring card for Malaysia is face down, so it wouldn't choose that. It wouldn't choose the Philippines because that is behind Vietnam in the priority list. So we're going to place a cube into Vietnam onto the economic track. Okay, my turn. Uh, okay, this one here will remove some influence for China, so we'll play that. It will mean we won't be able to score economics, but at least we may be able to score uh, Vietnam in a later turn. We don't have a mode match. Okay, so let's do that. So move three Chinese influence to available, economic influence to available, which I've done. Uh, move one US economic influence to available. Oh, rubbish. That's going to have to be Malaysia. It's okay, I scored that. Um, and then decrease the tension. Okay, that's not uh, maybe not as good as it, I thought it was, but... It will have to do, okay, China, China turn. It is a economics, uh, meaning it will, wi will win a VP because it has the one VP there. I have no economic cubes. In fact, it will win two VPs because it has one here. So we'll back up to five for the VPs in the Chinese favor. The economic card goes face down. End of the round for, uh, end of the turn, sorry, for that. Chinese uh, bot. 
here though we do now need to start thinking about placing some things i'm going to place uh some of these uh phone ops now using this card use it as an operation value of two and i'll place one of them into into paracel islands one of them into the philippines Scarborough Shoal, as it is when it's at the Philippines, moving that up to high because I can replace two of the Fonop cubes. Solo bot will try to score Indonesia. It cannot uh, because it's not going to cubes and it's going to not be a friendly card match. It's not a one operations value, but it will do political warfare. So two or less, it will lock down another country. It's got a one. So it will lock down somewhere else. And it will try to lock down somewhere where I have a couple of cubes at least. So it will lock down Vietnam. That's a bit rubbish. Because now I can't, I can't place cubes in Vietnam. I could potentially still try to score it, but I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't. That'd be a draw, basically, unless I tried to do political warfare. Don't really have enough, uh, enough time really to do that any more than. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's play uh, Indonesia here. Uh, this card for its scoring, which is a one. Up Operation value card, but I'll play it for its scoring. Score Indonesia, I get a point, and the Indonesia card will flip. And the thing about Indonesia cards, and also Brunei as well, is that you you can um, move a cube from reserve to available. Not that it's going to do a huge amount right now, uh, but but we can at least have an extra cube free. Uh, final card of the game then for the for the China bot. It is a three value card. There's no friendly mode match. Of course I do need to check that it will score Vietnam. It won't score Vietnam because it's a draw currently with two cubes, third cube, two cubes and a third cube. Meaning we do draw this no political warfare, no friendly mode match, no one operations. So we just jump to three operations points. It cannot place anything in the contested regions. So we will place cubes. Again, prioritizing areas with associated islands meaning I think we're basically going to pop one here, one here, and one here. I think that's how it'll work. And that's its turn done, uh, which means my final card of the game is to do something with this. I think what I'll do is I will pop the tension to low and then place a cube into the Paracel Islands. Now let's put it into Malaysia. That will make a better difference because I'll then also win Malaysia. I wouldn't win here, but I would win Malaysia. Okay. Tension track goes up. Not that it makes much difference now. End of the game. Only thing that remains is to flip over those scoring cards and rescore everything. Okay, all the scoring cards are flipped and we do it in number order. They are numbered from 49 through to 55. And Brunei goes first, uh, meaning that we will get a VP because we have an extra cube in, uh, in Brunei. Indonesia is next. Indonesia, I get a point because I've got a cube. Cool. Uh, then we have Malaysia and the Spratly Islands, so that's two and three. So I get a point for Malaysia and the Spratly Islands. Next is Vietnam. Now Vietnam and the Parasol Islands is four versus three. Therefore, China will get a point. 
then the Philippines is three versus four, five, six. The most they can score with the Philippines is three, so they will score three. One, two, three. So they're back to five. Ouch. The last two cards to score then are economics and the phonops. Now economic is the country with the most economic cubes in each location will score a point. So here we have a point for Vietnam, a point for Vietnam, for Malaysia, again for China. No points here, no points here, a point for China in the Philippines. Wow, we are now being rinsed. And the final, final card then of the game is to score myself a point for having more phonops than CRs across these three regions. And with the scoring of the phonop card, the game is over and the China bot has won by seven. Okay, the end of the game. Quite a interesting game, this one. Uh, hope you enjoyed the playthrough. It is time for me to bid you goodbye and hopefully see you next time.